brakes. Hands up, hands up, brake, two inches, hold, brake, hold, hold the brakes, hold them, hold them, hands up, hold them, hold them, hands up, hold them, pull, hold, hold, gentle, don't overdo it, don't overdo it, pull, hold, pull, easy, hands up, lean, brake, hands up, hands up, walk back, oh, yeah, sweet, that was awesome, man. All of those reflexes directly translate into flying. If you take a collapse in the air, it's because you didn't have the training here. So if you can climb up a post, it's exactly the same as controlling the glider in the air. So him being able to control the altitude of his butt with the glider means the odds of him taking a collapse in the air are right near zero. Because if the pressure drops, his reflexes will automatically hit brakes and repressurize it. And it's just the reflexes are so sharp, it's just a whole different world. God, I mean, nobody's cool. ever died in the history of the sport who did it the right way with the right training and the right yeah. gear. You could almost so, say that for Scott. Well, Scott was a little different because there's things that can happen that, you know, will just ultimately end in your death. Where with paramotoring, you could literally full stall it from 10,000 feet straight into the ground and get up and laugh about it. Because the speeds are so much slower than skydiving. With skydiving, if you don't flare for landing, you could literally break your back. Oh yeah. Easier die because you hit at like 1,500, 2,000 foot per minute. I, I bounced off my knees. Yeah. Where with this, if you didn't flare, you would hit like jumping off one of these posts. Which is, you know, you trip and fall down, but it's a total non-issue. So it's just a total different safety level. Because we're flying gliders. And these aren't the gliders, these are teeny little training gliders. the skill if you don't have these kinds of skills there's no way you could fly because gotcha. you'd be all over you'd be losing control I mean, you can already see even these guys with quite a bit of practice they're losing control here and there when they get to the point where they just stop losing control then they're ready to go fly so and then you just pull the glider up bam it's perfect you turn you go there is no maybe you launch you can launch every try piece of cake it's not even a challenge because you have total control you don't need a mountain because you got a motor. So you can launch anywhere. Yep. Yeah, he's just simulating basically preventing collapses. Yeah, Chris. trashy air yeah I've had them do it but it's hours. very different because they're built totally they're different right back. but it's also why they don't glide so they fall but a paraglider can have over a 12 to 1 glide ratio gotcha. and they're super long and skinny yeah. so it's not a little square fat you know foot and a half wide cell type of thing it's a really narrow skinny you know these are closer to skydiving exactly wings they look just because like they're short and fat but you get a real paraglider and it's long and skinny and much higher performance so when you get the skill to deal with it then you can enjoy that performance that takes I mean, we can fly that you know just barely you know below quarter throttle it takes very little throttle to stay in the air very efficient and if you shut your engine off at 500 feet, we could glide over a mile before we land because of that glide ratio. But when you fly a super efficient glider, it's more likely to collapse than a short, fat, fall out of the sky one. But you almost couldn't pair a motor with a skydiving reserve because they fall so fast, the motor wouldn't have enough power to keep it in the air. Yeah. They don't have the efficiency. So you kind of balance the benefits of the efficiency versus the stability. Yeah, I know. I, um, I've jumped some pretty small parachutes that were like zero porosity, 
and freaking like a like a wing, you know. And it just and, and it sounds like what you're talking about, whereas it's more rigid, it's more uh, like you said, responsive. And yep. A lot more high performance. Get yourself in trouble quick. Yeah, the smaller the smaller the kite, the quicker it is. So you really have to be on those reflexes. You can see how fast these are darting back and forth. Where a much bigger glider would be, whoa, be much slower. So, but we can actually motor these little kites. We can fly those. These things do like 45 miles an hour, straight and level. They haul booty. Yeah, hands up. Yo. <laughs> 20 some years old. I don't want to go jump yeah. on airplanes anymore. I tried it again a couple of years ago and I was like, ah, God, that was stupid. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot calmer. It's a lot gentler. Like skydiving, you got about a 1 in 70 chance you'll have a hard opening. It can literally slip discs and seriously injure you. I, I had one one time and knocked me unconscious. And, and my, yep. uh, my helmet, I was more lucky wearing a helmet. Some of the gear, like metal gear, caught on the helmet. Did a big old groove and dash in your face. Yeah. And I, I was literally like just kind of so phased that I, I don't know if I went unconscious or not, but I know it was that freaking hard.